previously, we unboxed the GMK Tech G3 Plus. After exploring the internal components, I swapped some of the components from my previous server and I added it to the Coral TPU. I first opened its heatsink and replaced the original thermal pads with new ones, since my temperature is going up this summer. I use a cutter to gently remove the pads. There are two small pads that need to be replaced. I used my new thermal pads and created two slices to almost the same size of the chips and installed it. I did this to try and lower the temperature as much as I can. A week after, I bought a riser cable to extend the Coral TPU as the temperature was still high. This is the A plus E key extension riser cable that supports PCIe and it's compatible with the Coral TPU. I installed it carefully to prevent bending the ribbon cable and placed it outside. Next, I flashed the Proxmox ISO with Ventoy, specifically the web UI. You can download the Linux tar file and follow the two steps for self-hosting and accessing the tool. After flashing, I booted to the Proxmox installation. I have set my SSD, my email address, my desired hostname, and my gateway and DNS. The first thing I did is to download the Proxmox VE post install script. The link will be in the description. Paste this in shell and run the command. You will be greeted with prompts, mostly you'll need to select yes. For high availability, if you plan to use more servers in Proxmox, select no. Otherwise, for home use only, select yes. The next thing we need to do is to check if the Coral TPU is detected. We can check this via installing and running LSHW. We should find in PCI0. Once found, we can proceed with the installation as we have verified the key slot is PCIe ready. From the official guide, we can start at the PCIe driver installation. We copy the commands and remove sudo from the text. We will run these commands in shell. Step 1 is all about adding the repository to Proxmox so that we can install the packages for the next step. Step 2 is installing the runtime packages. These packages is what makes the Coral TPU driver. For convenience, we will install it for now. And step 3 is creating a group called Apex and setting the permissions to the user. This also grants us access to use the driver for later. A link of this guide from Google will be in the description. Once you've run all these commands, simply run reboot now for it to take effect. If you copy the command from step 5, you can see the module is detected. But running the command in step 6 leaves you with a directory not found. This is a common error in Proxmox and the fix is in the Proxmox forum by LiloBZH. To do this, we will need to remove the gasket DKMS and install the build packages like git, dev scripts, and dhdkms. After waiting for a few minutes, we can now clone the gasket driver. Before we continue, our required step is to install the Proxmox headers. Some builds can fail because the headers weren't installed. You can install the PVE headers or Proxmox headers. And now we can build the driver. CD into the gasket driver directory and copy the dbuild command to start creating the Debian package. CD back to home. And use the dpackage command to install the driver. Finally, do an apt update, apt upgrade, and reboot once done. 
And now, if we check the directory, the Apex directory now exists. However, the issue is the GPU driver. In kernel 6.8, the GPU is not yet compatible. No pass through can be done since the GPU's directory is not yet available. To fix this, we're going to need to upgrade the kernel. The minimum version for the GPU to work is 6.11, and we have a guide in Proxmox forum to do that. The first step is done earlier when we installed the post install script. Do an apt update to check for updates and do an apt search. We are looking for the latest Proxmox kernel for 6.11. I've tried both 6.11 kernels and they work both fine for the N150. Once found, do an APT install of the latest kernel of 6.11. When upgrading for the first time, a message shows up related to grub. To fix this, simply copy the echo command from the log message and run the command. Next, I reinstalled the grub EFI. This command will be in the description with the timestamp. After that, I ran update grub and reboot now. To check if we are in 6.11, run the uname command to verify the kernel version. Next, we need to install the Proxmox headers. The version is the same as our kernel. Checking slash dev, we found the Apex driver is missing again. This is because every time you switch your kernel, the Coral TPU is needed to be built again. However, this time the process is much faster and we don't need to repeat some of the steps from the installation. Check what happens if you use the folder from earlier to build the package. It will give an output of a time skewed error. When we upgrade, it's best to work with fresh files. To fix this, simply remove all files related to the gasket driver and the folder itself as we will clone a fresh copy and repeat the succeeding steps. We will use the rm command to remove the files. So clone a new copy of the gasket driver. cd to the directory of the driver. Run the dbuild command. Go back to your home directory, install with the package, do an apt update and apt upgrade, and reboot now once done. To check if it works, run step 5 and step 6 to see if there's an output of the TPU. For the GPU, use the ls command in the drive folder. It should contain card 0 and render D218. After a few weeks, I decided to also add how to update to the latest kernel. Along that the fix for building the gasket driver in kernel 6.14. We do an apt search and find the latest kernel. You should at least use 6.14.0-2 when installing as the first version has problems with ECC. Simply do an apt install on the latest kernel and headers. Now, the installation ended with an error related to the gasket driver. To continue, we need to uninstall the gasket driver first, as we will also create a custom build for the driver. Once removed, the installation will continue and we will now need to pin the kernel. First, type in proxmox boot tool kernel list to list all available kernels used in the system. Next, we will run proxmox boot tool kernel add on the latest kernel that we have currently installed into proxmox. Finally, we will do proxmox boot tool kernel pin so that the latest kernel is always used on boot and reboot once done. Running uname, we can see we are using the latest kernel. 
the GPU in this version functions normal and all we have to do is build the Coral TPU. Also, if you check the logs, it does not give any specific errors, unlike using the first 6.14 kernel. Like before, we will need to remove the all built files and clone folder to avoid errors during building the package. We will use the rm command to remove all related files in home. Then, use it again but with flags to remove the gasket driver folder. First, clone the gasket driver. CD into the gasket driver directory. Now, instead of building immediately like the previous, CD to the source folder. In here, we're going to edit two files, the C files of gasket core and gasket page table. If you visit the GitHub page, you would need to remove a line in the gasket core file. Run nano with a C flag and the first file is the gasket core. We need to go to line 1376 and remove that line in the file. It has LLseq in that line. Once found, simply remove it and simply do it with backspaces and save and exit once done. Next, we need to fix the DMA buff. Run nano with the same flag and the file is gasket page table. In here, we go to line 57 and we need to add two double quotation marks inside the parentheses. Make sure the DMA buff turns yellow when you add it at the start and at the end. Once done, save and exit and we can now proceed with the D build. CD back to the main gasket driver folder and proceed with the dbuild command. As you can see, there were no errors during the build. Next, CD back to home and install the package with the package. There are also no errors since we have already fixed the problems in advance. Next is an APT update and upgrade. Proxmox had the 8.4 update, so I proceeded with the update installation. After the installation, I checked for changes in the kernel list. Nothing was changed, so I proceeded with a reboot now. Then, after booting, I checked with Uname and my kernel is unaffected from the update. Checking the Coral TPU and the GPU, both directories are present in slash dev, and journal control did not report any ECC errors. Finally, checking on Frigate, my TPU is found along with my GPU, and for weeks, it has been functioning well. I use QSV for my GPU, as I found out it was more better than VAPI with the N150. After replacing the thermal pad, the temperature decreased about 2 degrees Celsius. Then with the riser cable, I was able to effectively decrease it around 57 to 59 degrees Celsius. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps the channel out. And feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. In the next video, I'll also show you how to install Frigate, and I'll also cover how I use Netbird to access my CCTV remotely. And finally, I will also show you how to view your live CCTV footage at your smart TV and non-smart TV appliances. And with that, thank you guys for watching, and have a great rest of your day.